taken two amazing things, robots and Harry Potter, in your first ever level 2 project and combining them into the Robo Wizard Battle! This tutorial wouldn't be complete without a little cosplay. Wait, what? what? Oh yeah, this is not planned. <laughs> you, you have your mother's eyes. Don't put the ball yet! You are going to be building Ike, the best robot ever, modding him with weirdly placed sensors, and <laughs> programming him to battle in the Robo Wizard Battle. We already said that. Um, so here are the skills that you will gain by doing this project: six building skills, Great. seven programming skills, and nine robot training skills. It's time to build. You're gonna go to your computer desktop. It's probably gonna be a PDF called Ike, and you're gonna follow the instructions to build. Him. A few pro tips for you when you're building. From when life. you're lining up the arm in step 62, be sure to line it up so that it looks like the mirror image of the other arm before you stick it on. So the hands come to meet in the middle. Oh. Building Ike's head and neck uh, runs steps 68 and 73. The only remaining beams in the kit would be a couple holes too long. Oh dear, no problem. Use the longer beams. Deal with it. When you're done, it's time to modify your Ike robot with all the coolest sensors that you've ever seen. I might have just covered up the microphone. He'll be the sickest bot on the block. Edit that out. <laughs> Let's talk about the sensors we're going to use in this project. Boom! Gyroscopic sensor. This can set all sorts of cool stuff on your robot like the angle and the rate of rotation. We'll be using it to sense the angle that Ike is at for more precise turning. So use connector pins to secure it to this part of Ike and make sure that it's face that the correct side is facing forward so that Ike can turn in the right direction. We're also using a color sensor, which can sense all the colors of the rainbow. Use a 4x4, four, four, four connector pins, and an offset corner connector to mount your color sensor in the most weird way possible. <laughs> Flip. Okay, so here's how it works. You're gonna program Ike to pick up a pool new Harry Potter <laughs> character and dispose of them into either Honey Dukes Candy or Shop, yay. The Chamber of Secrets. But how does Ike know where to put the person? By sensing the color card that is in front of the character, red means that that character is evil, like Voldemort, um, or Umbridge. And therefore, should be disposed of into the Chamber of Secrets, where they will ultimately die a painful death. Green means that the character is good, and they should be rewarded by going to Honey Dukes. Who wouldn't want that if you're a good boy, little boy? When Adidas is life. What time is it? It's for a minute. What? Programming time. I'm about to do this backwards. Hello friends, glad you could join me today. Today we're gonna uh, program Ike. This is gonna be great. Wow! My favorite part of this project is programming Ike because it's so intricate and complicated. But you're a scout, you can do this. And plus robotics wouldn't even be fun if it wasn't super hard. All right, open up your favorite program. It's a mod kit. I'm gonna start by naming my project. I'm just typing. Saving it, and then let's set up our components. We have a drivetrain, a rotator for the body, and a rotator for the arms, and then we also have a color sensor and a gyro sensor. I have a thing in my eye. Eh, eh. <laughs> let's assign all the ports, um, and we're gonna rename our rotators so we don't get confused, you know. Something cool, notice with the color sensor is that you can switch between Three different modes uh, three color mode 12 color mode and grayscale mode and we're gonna stick with three color mode which is just red green blue um, because we only need to sense red and green one thing we're gonna do real quick to our drivetrain is change the measurements um, because the drivetrain for Ike it's a different size than the drivetrain for the base model which is what all of our builds have been on up until this point so if you click on the little settings icon then right here you can change your dimensions as needed. I believe the measurements are 105 for the wheelbase and 163. Uh, the wheelbase, by the way, is from the axle to axle right here, and the 
track is the front of the robot from the center of the left wheel to the center of the right wheel. Okay, so for this project we're gonna try something new called broadcasting events. I'm gonna give an example of broadcasting. So in this code, one of the things we wanna do is have Ike bend over and pick up the Harry Potter character um, when he senses a color card in front of it. So I'll tell the drivetrain to go forward, but if he sees, say, like a, a red card, I'm gonna create an event called bend over, and then another called pick up, and broadcast those events. Basically calling it up and saying, hey, all places in the robot program, I'm here. So then I can go into the tab for the rotator that controls the body and say, when I broadcast bend over, rotate forward a little bit. And then I can go into the rotator that controls the arms and say, when pick up is broadcasted, pick up the pool noodle, grab it. Grab that pool noodle. See, so we can code our rotators when we need to using broadcasted events. You'll see how this works in a second. So we're gonna start in the gyro tab and start with the always dank when start. Every time we start our program, we're gonna wanna calibrate our gyro, which is a process the gyro runs through to make sure everything is okay and it's all up to speed. This takes about three seconds, so we're gonna put a wait three or four seconds block underneath it just to give it a good uh, chunk of time to take care of its business. Um, and then after this, we're gonna wanna reset the angle and rotation so that the gyro knows where zero is on it. Also, you can go into the brain tab and have it play a noise or print something to the screen to add extra awesomeness. And then back to the gyro tab, we're gonna broadcast an event that will be the event that will be, wow, that, it, that sentence though. It'll basically be the event that calls up the main code where the robot drives forward and keeps its beady little eyes out for color cards. So let's go where this action will actually happen, the drivetrain tab. So now in order for the code to happen when the event is broadcasted, we can't just say when start, we need to say when this event is broadcasted. So we're gonna do that. So for the structure of this code, we're going to do a forever loop with two if statements inside, one in case it sees red and one in case it sees green. So outside these if statements, we're gonna put the plain old drive forward command so that if it doesn't see anything, it's just gonna drive forward until it does. So let's just jump in with the first if statement. If the color that my sensor senses is red, first, we want it to grab the pool noodle, right? So we're gonna have him stop, then pop forward a little bit. Mm. <laughs> and now we're gonna broadcast an event called bend over where, let's go over to the body tab, bend over is broadcasted. We're gonna set holding to on and then it's gonna rotate forward a little like 180 degrees. So now the noodle actually needs to be grabbed between his Pause. Pause? So we're creating a new event and broadcasting it from the body tab. Okay, and then we're gonna go over to arms and say, when this event is broadcasted, set holding to on and rotate all the way forward. I found that it was like 770 degrees, or degs, as the kids say. Okay, going back to bend over. One thing you want to note about broadcasting is when you broadcast an event, you wanna put a wait command after the broadcast. That way it doesn't broadcast something so that that thing happens and then it goes immediately down to the next command and then you have two things happening at once and then you can't time it right. So the arms take about two seconds to fully close so our pause will be just that. Give it a little, give it a little time so that it doesn't bend over and bend up and close its arms and gets confusing. <laughs> so after the arms have closed we want our bot to stand back up so we're gonna reverse the motor 180 degrees. Now let's go back to the drivetrain tab. So the whole pool noodle collecting process with the bend over and the grabbing takes about three seconds. So under bend over broadcasting, we're gonna wait three seconds. And for the next part of this, we want our robot to turn right and drop off the pool noodle in Azkaban. Nope, not Azkaban, <laughs> the Chamber of Secrets, because it's a bad noodle. Let's have it back up a little bit and then turn right 90 degrees. Since we're using a gyro sensor, for the first time, it's gonna work a little bit differently. Think of a gyroscopic sensor like a clock, but with 360 minutes. It counts up to 360 degrees counterclockwise, like 90, 180, 270, 360. But 
clockwise, it goes negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, and negative 360. So if we want it to turn right, we're going to have it count in the negative direction, and if we want it to turn left, we're going to have it count in the positive direction. Mmm! Math! So going back to the code, we're going to tell Ike to turn right, but only while the robot's rotation that the gyroscope is measuring is greater than negative 90 degrees. So it's going to turn still greater than 90 degrees, still neg- oh, it's at, it's at negative 90 degrees, so it's going to stop. Uh, I'm going to change it to negative 85. That seems to be the, the sweet spot, if you know what I'm saying. And if you're wondering why we use this rotation block instead of this angle block, the angle block only counts in the positive direction, and we want, we want to be able to count in the negative direction so it doesn't have to, like, <laughs> One last thing I'm gonna do before all of my turns is slow it the F down to make sure we're precise F. No, but seriously, if it goes really fast, it might get, it might overshoot a little bit. Okay, so once Ike has reached his turning destination, we're gonna have him stop and drive forward, um, and then let's broadcast an event where he drops it like it's hot. <laughs> Yes, this event is going to take about two seconds. We'll cheat. Just put that block right there. So the code for this in the body tab is going to look like this. We're going to set the whole thing to on. He's going to rotate forward 180 degrees. Wait a second for the arms to open and then he's going to stand back up. And then we're going to make the arms open over in the arm tab. So set holding to on. We're going to wait a half a second for the body to move forward or to bend forward. As soon as this event is, as an event is broadcasted, all places where it says when this event is broadcasted do this will start running at the same time and so we want to kind of time events so that it works. And then we're gonna have the arms open all the way back. Back in the drivetrain tab, we're gonna tell Ike to back it up so that when he turns back his big arms don't knock over the noodle. This has happened so many times when I was prototyping this. <laughs> then we're gonna have him turn slowly back to zero. Setting up our while loop so that he turns left as long as the number on, that the gyro is reading is smaller than zero, right? Because we're in the negative. So we go, it's still smaller, it's still smaller. Oh, it's at zero. Boom, we're, we're good, we're good. Okay. <laughs> then we're going to stop. Okay. The last thing we need him to do is to go forward a little bit so that he doesn't just resense the color block he just sensed. Um, because as long as we're inside this if statement, his senses aren't looking for nothing. So if, if we haven't moved forward past the color card in that, inside that if statement, he's not gonna sense the color block. Boom. Now I recommend you save and test at this point and make changes to any of the distances or the measurements as needed. Because the good news is, the code for when he senses green is literally the exact same as when he senses red, except the directions that he turns are reversed. So, I'll show you the code for that here. test Ike, make sure his arms and body are all the way back and open, and line him up as straight as possible. You just did an amazing thing. Okay, I'm gonna break his arm. I'm excited about level two. It's gonna be awesome. I hope you guys enjoy making this. No, <laughs> that would arrive. <laughs> Bye! Hey guys, so I'm just going to share with you my Coachella fashion for 2017. I know I'm like breaking boundaries. I'm breaking through in the science of fashion, so I try to keep up. <laughs>